obviously Disney Plus is in my um, uh, rotation and um, uh, there's a story that came up this week um, uh, Disney earning call and um, you know what they're planning on doing over the next two years etc so I had a quick look not particularly interested in going through a dissertation of the earnings call because you know we're not financial analysts or anything but um, I wanted to have a quick chat about um, Disney because um, I was actually um, the, the the breadth of their catalog on Disney Plus is really impressive. So it it's kind of um, I guess if you want to call it it, you can see why maybe the subscription fee is justified kind of thing. And they do come out with new things, but obviously their um, trajectory of recent years hasn't been the best. And it's largely financially, I'm not entirely you know I'm not going to go into the financial part of it, but creatively. They've been having a bit of wobbles um, in relation to, you know, with the relationship with their audience um, as um, as it's um, spoken through their major franchises. And I find, find that quite extraordinary because if you, you know, go back to probably the mid 2000s when I think Bob Iger was there at the time and he initiated that whole drive to start um, scooping up and purchasing big chunks of popular culture. So, you know, picking up Pixar from. Um, uh, Steve Jobs, I think it was, um, and then um, obviously a few a few years later, Mar- Marvel was a big one um, that he picked up, and then of course the uh, the Uber pop culture franchise of Star Wars off of um, off of Lucas. And prior to um, the pandemic, um, that's usually that's probably a good uh, barometer of where where the demarcation line is. That that fifteen year period there, I thought. Um, they were going gangbusters with um, all those franchises financially. I think creatively they were doing really well with Pixar and Marvel, not so much with Star Wars, but we'll get into that um, shortly anyway, even though they made truckloads of money out of the films that they did release. Um, But then you got into the pandemic and obviously people couldn't go to the cinemas um, and then they had to go, well, what are we going to do with this? And then that, that coincided with a new CEO coming in because Bob Iger retired and then the there was a strategy shift towards, um, well, we're going to just promote Disney Plus now as being the place to go for all these things, which obviously made sense in a pandemic year where no one could go to a cinema. Um, but what ended up coming out over the subsequent years after that, at least from what I found, is that um, the fr- these franchises started to, um, the way they were handled, started to um, tarnish the reputation a bit with the audience because it wasn't the quality of them arguably went down um there was a an encouragement to watch them on subscription rather than going to the cinema which became a problem later when cinemas reopened and then um, they were wondering well why aren't these movies making as much money anymore oh we can just hang out for them to show up on disney plus now and then there's just um like a directionless sort of um, kind of feel to a lot of it. Now, Bob Iger's since come in because um, I believe they uh, didn't like what that uh, interim CEO was. Well, he was full CEO, but the CEO in the interim period didn't, uh, didn't do a particularly good job from what they were saying. And so now he's kind of taking this approach of we're going to slow everything down. We're going to focus on just making them the, all of the products as good as we can. And I guess, you know, you know, obviously the going back to established franchises. So there's, um, you know, a new Toy Story film coming out, a new Frozen film, a sequel to Zootopia, which was very popular. Um, the, the next Star Wars film is going to be based off The Mandalorian, which was one of their few successful Star Wars shows that creatively speaking. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, um, trying to button it down and like uh, trying to refocus the company in a way to produce what they what they were doing before because um by by comparison pixar films were always amazing creatively i think um marvel films they had an excellent run up until avengers endgame in 2019 and then they the the next phase of their films kind of we we didn't really know what they were doing plus they introduced like oh you also now have to watch a whole bunch of tv shows on the subscription service to keep up with everything and i think it was like oh why do i have to do all of this now it's becoming homework you know when it comes to you know being a member of the audience and star wars well you know i think i've spoken about star wars before they did it financially they you know the three three or four films i think or maybe five films i think it was before the pandemic <clears throat> really really strong numbers except for one i think and they did well creatively you know 
Um, I personally think they ran it into the ground with those films. And aside from The Mandalorian and uh, Andor, which was, um, that's a great Star Wars show, um, they really didn't do well with the, the Star Wars shows. And they've kind of encouraged that the Star Wars shows is now, are now TV rather than a cinematic event, which, again, undercuts when they want to go out and do a film, why are people going to go out for it? So anyway, I've, it's a long-winded way of saying that... Um, You've got all of these amazing franchises and to run them this way is um, kind of a creative travesty um, in a way because um, it's not like you're having to come up with something new. You've got these really strong established brands that you can make good content out of and you know, uh, and I'll come back to Star Wars, you know, you've got an unlimited universe of potential and yet nothing has been coming out that's been that great so i don't know what you think about all of that steve <laughs> oh i think you've uh, pretty much nailed it i think you know what we've seen is disney which has its roots in content and particularly also in in obviously disneyland uh creating experiences and content for you know generations uh, around the world and probably what we've seen in the last 20 years is really an acquisition shift and and through that acquisition i guess they've to some extent maybe lost focus on the content to become distribution uh sort of company and i think we really saw that i think uh when was it just pre-covid when they realized the dominance of netflix and they started to recall their titles and uh you know went out with disney plus so you know we now have a, a company that basically creates a wide, uh, I guess, uh, schedule of, of content, uh, but the emphasis has shifted towards distribution and the distribution model as opposed to the content creation model. And I think that's where we see ourselves today. I mean, to be honest, I looked at those seven things and I just, you know, nothing makes me groan more than seeing to Toy Story 5. I mean, <laughs> but... I guess by now they could just remake Toy Story 1 and it'll be fine. <laughs> so, like, you know, it th there was nothing there that really stood out for me and I was a bit surprised that they had Taylor Swift at number six. Maybe they think she's doing all right by herself. They don't need to put her at number one. So it, it's all, it's all uh, an interesting time. I think Bob Iger seems to be trying to push back towards that uh, content creation platform uh and we'll see how successful he is but uh yeah uh, content creation ain't what it used to be mm. and just one final thing on it and i haven't watched the film i probably should check it out just to see how much of a train wreck it is but um they released an, an animated film called wish um at the end of last year and by all accounts it was meant to celebrate the 100th anniversary of disney animation and apparently it's the worst film they've ever made um and it I, I wonder if some of that is like that was like the final icing on that turd so to speak to like say maybe we need to change our focus here yeah it'll be interesting to see if they can come back i think once you lose that uh creative shift it can be very difficult 